Well, well, well. Look who joined the festivities. Jim Shoe Stories on a Thursday. We're going to talk about the Air Jordan 6. Stay tuned, stay locked. We'll be back after the break. Trust and believe. Trust and believe you are tuned into episode 128 of The Nomad Cast. It's a podcast that provides an all inspiring storytelling experience. I'm your host, Mr. Anderson, and thank you for tuning in. We got a special guest. Well, we got guests, I guess we could say, in the building. The Air Jordan 6, y'all, is joining us. Yay! The Air Jordan 6 in the house. Jim Shoe Stories on the Thursday. Without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the history of the Air Jordan shoe and cultural impact and uh, what Michael Jordan did in these shoes that he didn't do in other shoes. Let's check it out. Let's talk about the history of the Air Jordan 6. The Air Jordan 6 debuted in 1991 with an original price of $125. Ladies and gentlemen, before I get started, $125 freaking dollars, not this colorway, but this actual silhouette. When it debuted in 1991, it was $125. As you can see here on this picture, I, yours truly, for my birthday, paid 200 and something dollars for this shoe. Oh, by the way, $200 price tag. Oh, by the way, via the Nike app, I paid $12 in shipping. So I came out of pocket $212 for these shoes. I mean, it's worth it. You know, I'm a gym shoe guy. So, but to think about it, I paid $212 for these shoes when the shoe originally debuted in 1991. That joker was $125. Think about that, y'all. That was almost 30 years ago. Well, it was 31 years ago to be exact. Let's continue before I start going crazy about this. Another historical fact on this shoe. On order, Michael Jordan directed designer Tinker Hatfield to ensure the shoe had a reinforcement around the toe. So Michael had issues with other previous Air Jordans. If you, you can see the reinforcement right here on the toe, right up under the toe box, right here. Now, basketball players, they're pivoting, they're cutting, they're rolling, they're doing all these things in this shoe. You need the shoe to be functional. Michael Jordan had issues with his toes with previous editions, like I mentioned. So he said, hey, Tinker Hatfield, fix my toe. My toe is messed up. It's on you, Tinker Hatfield, to fix it. Tinker said, I got you, Mike. Don't even worry about it, like I was there. As you can see again, the reinforcement on the toe, right? No issues, Mike. You went on to be a great basketball player. Some more historical notes. The Air Jordan 6 added a more solid rubber bottom due to previous slippage issues with the Jordan 5. Now, as you can see here with the Air Jordan 5, the bottom of it, I tell you, it was very slippery. I had a pair of these. Very slippery. You'll be playing basketball in these and you think you're in the freaking ice capades, rolling on ice. The Russian judge gives you a 10. So Mike said, hey, Tinker, I know you just redid the toe, right? I'm giving you a lot of orders. I got another one. Please do not make the Air Jordan 6 slip and have, have me doing the ice capades like you did the Air Jordan 5. Because as you see here in the notes, a lot of kids were falling, and I've seen it personally. I myself personally was falling with the way that sole was made for the Air Jordan 5. The Air Jordan 6, as you can see the bottom of it, Look at this rubbery sole. More traction. These holes can, can be able to uh, provide some additional traction. Um, sound like a tire commercial. Provide you additional traction. But if you look at the holes of this, right, you can tell it's almost like little suctions, if you will. A lot of pivoting, cutting, doing everything that a basketball player, an active basketball player is doing. This shoe was phenomenal. It gripped it. It hugged the road like a Michelin commercial, like a Firestone, like a Goodyear. This soul hugged the basketball courts. This soul hugged the concrete courts. For y'all that's old school cats, you know exactly what I'm talking about. More historical stuff, please. Jordan also wanted the heel tab position to not hit his Achilles tendon, making it the first shoe of any sort to have a molded structure on the back. Now, I remember back in the day, and a lot of the old guys and gals, they can remember this with me. We didn't call these heel tabs. It's amazing nowadays. There are so many uh, names, so much nomenclature for certain accents on a shoe. We just called these hooks. 
we used to take these shoes and we would walk around and have them like this for basketball practice. You know, you put on your slides, your flip flops in between basketball practicing and the game. And guys and gals was carrying their Jordans just like this. Y'all know y'all were because I was there back in 1991. We was all doing that. Now, all of a sudden, I guess now with the infusion of the Internet and we've become smarter. Now they're heel tabs. Back then, we called them hooks. And y'all know I am not lying. Now, we talked about the historical fact. One thing I didn't mention, and I, you know what? I'll save it for the nostalgia piece. So let's talk about style. Style and charisma. This Air Jordan 6, I'm telling you. We used to wear these jeans, cross-color jeans with them, damaged jeans, used jeans. That was the name of the brand. And we would kind of put the, let the, um, the blue jean, because they were baggy back then, we would let the blue jean kind of hang over the tongue. You want to show the tongue, right? And your pants will actually fall in between the tongue, your ankle, your leg, and all that, in between the uh, heel tab. So it, it made you look fresh. I mean, you was fresh to death, as we used to say back then. This is a phenomenal shoe, a beautiful shoe. If you listen to other gym shoe stories on a Thursday, I always talk about this. Phenomenal shoes, beautiful shoes. I wasn't really a fan of this trim. I like the original trim, as you can see here in some of the other colors. But this midnight blue, blue and navy, you know, I call it blue. Uh, this silhouette was is beautiful. The thing about this type of shoe, with this colorway, the silhouette is phenomenal. But with this trim and this colorway, you have to be very careful when you're walking around. If you're like me, I don't like walking in grass. I don't like walking in dirt. So when you rock in this shoe, whether you got jeans on, whether you got basketball shorts on or whatever, to keep this shoe clean, my recommendation is to use some type of new age cleaning solution. You may can use some soap. If you use a toothbrush, be careful how you brushing uh, the shoe because it can strip away some things. But if we're going back to style, I mean, this shoe was perfect for jeans. You know, you could wear it with shorts, like I mentioned. But if you're wearing blue jeans, any type of pants with this, let that top of that pants hit in between the daggone tongue and that heel tap, and you're on it. Nowadays, guys and gals, they don't wear the jeans like we used to. Their pants are more tight. They're fitting. Nowadays, we had baggy pants. So when you wore baggy pants back in the 90s, your whole pant can fit and almost like balloon out. I mean, you had to be there to do it, but nonetheless, you can still wear these with shorts as well. Phenomenal shoe, beautiful design. Everything about this shoe is fascinating. It's fantastic. I haven't worn these yet. I bought them for my birthday. My birthday was July 13th of this year, right? Happy birthday to me. Happy belated birthday to me. And I haven't worn this shoe yet, but again, if we're looking at style-wise, I mean, just look at it. Got the little velvet piece here. Got the toe tab. Look at that toe box now if you remember we're talking about style and i'm gonna point some things out for the older guys remember this used to say nike air in the back y'all remember that used to say nike air in the back but you can rock these on a regular if you have your kids going to school you know i know this shoe costs a lot and i'm not telling anybody to buy it but you know if your child is doing well in school you want to treat him or her to some jordans hey man ain't nothing wrong with it you, you deserve it Get you a pair of Jordans, Air Jordan 6s. Style-wise, style-wise, phenomenal. Still rock it on the regular. Now, let's go back to nostalgic memories. One thing I want to talk about before I get into my own personal nostalgic memory, Michael Jordan. I kind of talked about this in the intro. This was the first shoe. Again, not this colorway, but the silhouette. This was the first shoe that Michael Jordan won a championship in, as you can see here in the photo. They were black and red very first shoe that michael jordan won a championship in against the lakers in 1991. i'm telling you man now nostalgic memories for me i missed out on this shoe because when this shoe debuted i had just started working at white castle and i probably missed this by two weeks i missed the opening by two weeks and back then when you went to foot locker in my case i was in detroit back then when i went to foot locker when i went to sibley's when i went to dunham's when i went to uh some of these other stores in Detroit, because there wasn't no online. And I know East Bay had a catalog, but I don't remember ordering from it back then. Once the shoe sold, that was it, partner. And then you go to the salesman. Hey, what happened to the six? What happened to the Air Jordan? Oh, man, come back next week. You come back next week, it ain't even there, right? They're just trying to get you away. 
So I missed this one. And I ended up buying it a couple times in between when it was released in the 2000s and all that. But nostalgic memories, this was one of the first shoes, with so many shoes that I tried to purchase when I first started working at White Castle in Detroit. I didn't end up doing it. Like I said, I missed it by a couple weeks or whatnot. Um, but that's my biggest nostalgic memory, watching Michael Jordan, even though I was a Detroit Piston fan, I still like Michael Jordan. We all like Michael Jordan back in them days. Um, he won his first championship in the Air Jordan 6. So that's my nostalgic memory for the Air Jordan 6. <laughs> phenomenal shoe. Now, as we close this episode out, the Air Jordan 6, again, is a phenomenal shoe. What I tried to do with this episode, ladies and gentlemen, talk about nostalgic memories. And we'll talk about the history of the shoe and also show you some pictures regarding this shoe as well. Because I want to paint the picture on a lot of these folks think, oh, with well, this brand new Jordan, this just came out. No, ladies and gentlemen, this particular shoe, this particular silhouette, not this one, but the ones like this is 31 years old, right? They're bringing out all these Jordans, the ones, the twos, the threes, all these different Jordans, and all they're doing is just changing the colors on them. But the consumers like you, consumers like me, consumers like us, we still buying them. And for a lot of the older folks like me, we buy these shoes because of what? What it was like in 91. Oh, I had these in freaking 88. Oh, man, I had these in 86. My brother had these in 85. This is the reason why we're buying them. The younger folks, they're buying them for other different reasons. Hey, all good. We all doing what we want to do, right? But I tell you, as for me, Mr. Anderson, as a gym shoe head, sneaker head, whatever you want to call me, I never talk about a shoe on my podcast, on my Nomad cast, unless I either had it, tried to get it, or I'm not familiar with it. All these shoes I talk about, I'm very familiar with it, and I remember the commercials. I remember when it debuted. Um, again, Air Jordan 6, man. Probably, if you look at all the Jordans that ever came out, this has to rank probably in the top five as it relates to silhouettes, right? The Air Jordan 6, phenomenal, phenomenal. Hey, appreciate everybody tuning in today. I want to thank you for tuning in. If you notice, I haven't done a show in a couple weeks. I've been doing a lot of interviews with my military friends and comrades and all that. I'm definitely going to keep that going. But I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you for the increase in subscriptions, the followers on all the social media platforms and all that. Thank you again for tuning in. It shows me that you're, you you like the Nomad cast. You like what I'm talking about. And as I try to transition into more storytelling on a Nomad cast, I think that's the way I want to pivot. I think I'm passionate about telling stories. I like listening to stories. I enjoy stories. So why not marry the two and have your whole podcast, your whole Nomad cast, talk about stories? So that's why I talked about the awe-inspiring uh, storytelling experience. That's what I want the Nomad cast to be. So definitely continue your support. Thank you for everything that you do. Stay alert. Look alive. Be the best that you can be. Until next time, let's say it all together. Trust and believe. Yeah. <laughs>